Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. Today what I'm going to do is make a very unique style Tesla turbine design. What we're going to use to do this is these stepper motors. These stepper motors have a bunch of teeth and they have a stator and a rotor in there. The stator is the part that sits on the outside like this, holds all the electromagnetic coils around it. So there's one of the stator rings still in there. These would have had the copper wire coils. I have some of the copper wire sitting right there, wrapped all the way around. And the rotor would have sat right inside the center of that, which this piece right here is the rotor. And we have one of those stator rings sitting down there on that rotor. What we're going to do is use these laminates, which is what they're called. It's a laminated little sections of steel that are all pressed together. It gets rid of the eddy effects inside of electromagnetics. Uh, we're going to take these now that I've separated them all. And we're going to build a little tiny Tesla turbine that should produce incredible amounts of power because of all the little teeth that are all over on these things. So we not only have a bunch of teeth and little blades and exterior teeth in four positions, internal teeth right here. On each one of these, we got some blades in here, but we also have teeth here on the rotor. So let me pull that ring off real quick so you can see the rotor. I had to chip out so you can see this white material here. It's like an epoxy material was filled all the way through each one of these little teeth. And if I give you some angle there, you should be able to tell just how deep each one of those are. You see some of it still chipped needs to be finished off with the Dremel tool now. So I had to chip out all that material in those teeth to get it. So I had some recessed grooves in those. This will actually be where the center of the tornadic effect or the tornado's cone down focal point will grab against. So all that pressure, that energy being squeezed down will grab into each one of these little teeth here and help deliver a lot of that energy out the drive shaft, which is right here. We have a couple set of bearings already on there and that'll help deliver a lot of that energy out. Now with these rings, so what I'm going to do is now permanently mount all the stator rings down on this. Let me give me a second here to kind of line a piece of that up on there kind of. All right, if I can get that nice and even on there, you'll see what I'm going to do here. This will be basically a bunch of laminated rings once again, but like a Tesla turbine, we're going to have a little thin gap between each one of these rings. So there'll be a thin boundary zone or boundary layer right there between each one of them, allowing the Tesla style design, the Tesla turbine style design to function properly. And what I'm gonna do now is line each one of these up. So I'm gonna start out with all the teeth on the internal rotor here in the external ring to line up so there's an output hole in each one of those. You notice how nicely it creates that the air grab area right there at the center where all the energy is coned down at the very center of a Tesla turbine where normally you've got very thin or no blades at all right there in a smooth center. This will help grab a lot of that. So you get energy out here on these outer notches. You're going to get energy delivered here against these. You're going to get energy against the blade and the boundary layer effect against the surfaces. Uh, so one of the things now what I got to do is permanently mount all these rings with a little bit of a gap between each one of them. So I'm going to use probably a thicker construction paper or something like that that's going to be made out of plastic. Uh, to separate each one of the layers of the rings all the way down this. So I'm going to go from this side all the way down the center here to the other side and just stack a bunch of these external stator rings. So these were that ring, like I said, that were sitting inside of here. I busted them all out, took the wire off of each one of them. Now the next part of this is instead of each one of these rings being lined up with the next, so here, see if I can give you this. Instead of being lined up like this, what I'm going to do is stagger just like that, each one of the rings. So the next one will be staggered, the next one will be staggered and staggered. Nice thing is I'm going to line them up right with the teeth here. So they'll be a pretty even uh, staggering all the way around. Easy to monitor your staggering. Instead of lining them up so there's one big gap, just like this, all the way down the centers of them, where you can see my finger here behind the hole, I'm going to make sure there's a bunch of staggered blades, like a uh, spiral staircase basically going all the way up this thing. We're going to do that until we get all the way to the top. It's going to take me quite a while to get this all mounted, glued into place, everything set so it's hard mounted in there. The next step is I'm going to have to put this uh, into a table where I can spin it nice and fluidly without any wobble or anything. I'm going to have to set up a grinder because I need to remove just a very fine amount of this outer edge right here to fit that back in this case. So what I'm going to do, once that is set up, we're going to mount this back inside of that case and touch the sides way too much. So they're not going to give you any rotation without grinding. So I've got to do a little bit of work on the outside, but I'm not going to do that until I get it permanently mounted. And like I said, I'll just spin that next to a grinder on a solid platform, even it all out all the way around and move just enough material to give me enough rotation or air gap just so these will rotate without touching. Uh, once we're done with that, we're going to put this all back into the case. 
So we'll use the original stepper motor case. We're gonna put it all back in there. We're gonna drill some holes for the air input and the air outputs at the centers here, right around where the bearings are gonna be. It's the nice thing about this is the outer rotor right here is gonna be right about where the air output holes for this engine are gonna be. So right here, right around that outer ring that holds the bearing right here, it'll be the air outputs. And we'll put an air input into the side of this outer case just like that. So let me get that done and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm about halfway done with our Tesla turbine here. I wanna show you how I'm keeping these so they'll never rotate around the center of that shaft there. And right here, you notice that little tall pin sticking out at the tip of my finger? Right there, if you can see that. And there's another one right over here. These are keeper pins. And they're just big enough, I had to shave them down with a the grinder. They're just big enough to slide down inside of these channels and still line up with, let me zoom in for you still line up with these teeth on the other side the outer stator ring teeth there so i'm pushing that down i glue them into place and when I, every time i stack a new ring i offset by one tooth and right now you should be able to if i tilt this you should be able to look through those so you can see there's a air gap going all the way through the spiraling like staircase look right here at the tip of my finger. So I'm staggering each one of these blades, just making sure that this turbine has really a turbine style blade system in it. It's not only a Tesla turbine, but it has also a normal style turbine in it. Uh, how I'm spacing, you can see here down below, you can see the red wire. I'm spacing each one of the rings right against the center here with a piece of this copper wire that came out of there. And I'm just wrapping it all the way around and then I push down a new ring. And right now you can tell I have to add another piece to this to keep going, but I just got to the halfway marker there. So I'm ready to go. I got my new keeper pins in there and that'll make sure these rings never slide. Once you slide those down over these keepers, that's gonna make sure these outer rings don't slide against the inner ring here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and keep wrapping that copper wire around the center in between each one of the layers. I'm gonna finish the second half of this and I'll show you what it looks like when we've got the entire thing done. All right, so now that I've completed the entire rotor, I just want to go over it with you real quick, show you what it looks like. You can see the staircasing line going up the outside edge over and over again, all the way around it there. That is one of the advancements that I'm doing to the Tesla turbine. And that is because the outside edge of this was typically very, very smooth, just like in between these lines that you see where the indent doesn't exist very smooth. So you had to get to a very high RPM before it started producing the efficiencies that he had recorded. So one of the things about this is, is these are actually just little indents based on that little notch right there, the tip of my finger. You can see these notches all the way around. There's four on each one of those plates. And because each one's slightly staggered off from the next, it makes this nice staircasing look all the way around the outside. Each one of those little edges in there, the front facing edge, the air is going to impact. It's a little step to get it going. So we should get a much higher efficiency. Uh, at lower RPMs, or at lower pressures at least. So the startup torque from this Tesla turbine design should be greater or more efficient than the original design Tesla had. Uh, the other thing that's gonna advance the Tesla turbine in this design is if I can get the angle just right, you can see down in these holes right here, at the tip of my finger, each one of those as I go by, those are a swirling staircase, just like what you see on the outside edge, following all the way up here on the inside just like what you see on the outside so there is eight individual staircases all the way through this and like you see on the outside there's actually an air gap just like the Tesla turbine the boundary zone in between each one of those so it's not a dead stop there's actually going to be the the turbine style design Tesla had originated but also with a stepping vortex in the plates themselves or in the bridges of the plates and I have something kind of set up real quick here just to show you this would be more like what Tesla had designed you've got a bunch of the plates stacked together here and they're not spread apart in any way but they're stacked together and they'd be all equal in line all the way down whereas the advancement here is once again, there's a stepping staircase design all the way through this, following with the turbine or the, the vortex effect that's gonna take place inside of this. Uh, so one of the things here also that we added to increase the, the potential of the Tesla turbine is like I showed you in the original creation video, down inside of this is the center rotor piece that has all those little teeth in it that were magnetic hogging points in the stator motor that we used to start this with. And each one of those are gonna grab where the vortex gets the tightest inside of the engine and deliver a lot of torque around that inner rotor center there producing a lot more torque output to the shaft itself, which will increase the potential output of the Tesla turbine design. Now I've got two more of these I'm working 
on that are different patterns also designed to do different things each one has a different potential for either medium low or high rpm outputs uh, low pressure and high pressure outputs it's even one of these that i'm producing right now that i'm going to use to generate hot water through motion so real quick here let's finish this up Here's the bottom of the uh, outside casing. And I, you can see here I've drilled the holes all the way around. If you look on the inside of there, I had to drill them there because of the bearing cup that was in the case there. So I had to match it right on the outside of that all the way around. So we've got our air output holes and we can do that on both sides. But for now, because of the way this design is, it's gonna be better for impacting air at one top surface instead of directly into the center. I'm gonna start at the top, rotate the air through the system and out through the bottom. We're gonna attempt that first with this design and see how much better that's gonna work. Uh, the cap here, obviously nothing done yet, but you could once again drill those holes all the way around, which we may end up doing later on once this has been thoroughly tested this way. The outer ring here, I've just got one little hole drilled in it. I've got it dual slope, so I've pivoted in two different directions. That way I could test both directions uh, for which one would actually follow the cyclone better. There's an obvious path that makes, you know, physics says, you know, you want to spin it this way. But there could actually be a benefit to spinning in the opposite direction. You never know that until you try it, so I always leave myself an ability to test things like that. Something I thought of, once we're done with this, we can permanently attach the air input or water input or steam input channel onto this that would hold your hose and that would be finalized so there's our outer ring I've honed that out I put this in a drill here and just use a grinder pad against it as I spun it in a drill to get that all nice and even you can see how shiny it is let's go ahead and set this thing together now so I'm gonna take the bottom plate we're gonna take the bearing cup stick it right in there just like that there we go now because once again I want to show you that outer ring is magnetized if you just try to stick this ring on there and spin it, it's not going to look like it's spinning right. So you got to put the cap on to make sure you've got your tolerances. But that's going to give a really unique effect later on when you want to use this thing for other uh, projects. So let's put that outer case down around it. Kind of set it on there. Then we're going to take the top and put it on there. And there we go. And now we've got a spinning Tesla turbine ready to go. All we have to do now is put our air in right here or steam or whatever we're going to use for our power source i still got to find another way to clamp this whole thing together the original screws right here at the tip of my thumb you can see these four screw holes went all the way through the inner part of the case to the other side here is the opposite four screw holes and obviously i can't have bolts sticking through there right now because of the rotor that's spinning in there so i have to go to an outer bolt design over this which is pretty simple to do no big deal you can figure that on your own you could even drill through the case here and put a little set screw on the top and the bottom that'll hold it together you can see the back end of it ready to go the air output we can see the air inputs on the top side so the vortex has to be created all the way through the system come out the back side here next time what we're going to do is try to build some mounts for this we're going to get our air input set up and make sure it's in the right position before we go on to any power test obviously we're going to build a power output system for this uh, some kind of neodymium generator a high output generator to hook up to this so we can really measure the potential uh, outputs from our input hope you enjoyed folks until next time this was mr Tesalonian.